For my initial setup, I created a new project with the blank activity template. The first thing we are going to do is hop over to the activity main XML file to add our progress bar. I'm going to set up my design in XML because I think it's important that you understand what's going on rather than just clicking and dragging on the UI to set things up. Right off the bat, go ahead and change the root layout to a relative layout. Relative layouts allow us to position child elements relative to each other. Be sure to get rid of the Hello World text view and the unnecessary XLMNS attribute before continuing. Next, we are going to add a progress bar. Set its width to match parent so that it will match the length of our relative layout, filling the length of the screen. Set its height to wrap content so it uses whatever height Android defaults to for progress bars. After that, be sure to give it an ID. Because we want the progress bar centered, we are going to use the center and parent attribute. This allows us to center it in our relative layout. Next, I'm going to give it a margin so our progress bar isn't running into the sides of the screen. The last attribute that we're going to add to our progress bar is style. Because we want our progress bar to show us detailed loading information over a certain period of time, we want to use the horizontal style. You can also use the larger small spinning style that lacks loading progress information, but using an actual bar will make this tutorial easier to understand because we will be able to see the loading in real time. Next, we're going to add a text view so we can tell our users when we have finished loading. I'm going to give it an ID and set its width and height to wrap content so that our text view is only as big as its content. Below that, set a text attribute that says loading complete. Since we are using a relative layout, we want to let our program know where we actually want our progress bar relative to the other elements in the XML file. To do this, we will use an attribute called layout below and set it to the ID of our progress bar because we want it to display below the progress bar. I'm also going to center it using the center horizontal attribute. Next, I'm just going to give it a quick margin top so our two elements aren't running into each other and I'm going to set my text size to 24 SP. SP is usually what you want to use for font size because it takes into account both the user's font size preference and actual screen pixel density. Lastly, we are going to set our text view's visibility to invisible so that when our program starts, our users don't see loading complete until we are ready to show them that message. All right, we're done with the XML now, so let's head over to our main activity Java file. Right away on the class level, let's declare our progress bar in text view so that we can do stuff with them later on. We also need a counter variable to keep track of how far along our loading is for our progress bar. I'm going to call mine mProgressStatus and set it to zero. After that, we need to declare a handler object. Our handler is going to allow us to communicate from our background thread where we will be doing our loading to our main application thread where our UI is. All right, we're finished with our class level code, so let's move into the onCreate method. I'm going to connect up the XML elements for our progress bar and text view with the variables we just declared above so that Android knows what we're working with. As I touched on earlier, we want to do our loading in a background thread. This allows us to process our loading simultaneously with whatever else is going on. We wouldn't want to load in the same thread as our UI because a loading process would block the UI thread, potentially leading to unresponsive behavior or slowdown. In my new thread, I'm going to pass in a new runnable interface. The runnable interface allows us to do things inside our background thread by implementing its run method while the new thread object we just instantiated is active. Inside our run method, we are going to type a simple while loop. By default, the progress bar has a max value of 100, so we want to keep iterating through the loop until we reach that value using our mProgressStatus counter. Every time we hit the while loop, we want to add 1 to our mProgressStatus counter. Next up, I'm going to use the android.os.systemclock.sleep method. This method will delay the continued execution of our run function to mock actual loading. The method accepts milliseconds delay as an argument. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to set it to a really low number so that we will actually see the loading complete in a reasonable time. Thinking about your own implementation for personal projects, rather than using a force delay, you might want to keep going through the loop until a process in a different thread is complete. 
Remember earlier when I said that we are going to use a handler object to communicate back with the UI thread? That's what we're going to do next. We do that by calling the handler's post method and passing another runnable interface and implementing the run function again. In our run function, we're going to use our mProgressBar object to call the setProgress method and pass in our counter variable to update the progress bar. Now that we're finished with our while loop, we need to make use of that hidden text view we created earlier since loading will be finished. Once again, we need to communicate with the UI thread to pull this off. We are still in the background thread, so we need to once again use our handler and post method along with the runnable interface and its run method. In our run method, we need to use our mLoadingText object to call the setVisibility method and pass in view.visible to show off our loading complete message. Finally, we need to actually start up our thread, so we need to call the start method. Now when I run this, we'll see our fully functioning progress bar along with our loading complete message that comes up. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys found this useful and thanks for watching.